Greetings friends and welcome to 66 Books, a series of 66 short overviews of the 66 books of our Bible. And today you've reached the Song of Solomon, the Book of Love. Some say the Song of Solomon is one of the most ambiguous and often misunderstood books in the Bible. No question that on the surface it is a beautiful eulogy. A eulogy of love whose name is taken from the first verse. It is indeed a Song of Solomon. But it is also an amazing poem that celebrates marital love. The question of authorship is very straightforward since Song of Solomon chapter 1 verse 1 says this the Song of Songs which is Solomon's. Solomon's name appears seven times in the book in chapters 1, 5, 9, 11 and chapter 12. Many other facts confirm the view that Solomon wrote this book. Firstly chapter 4 of 1 Kings tells us that he wrote over 1000 songs and this, many believe, is his most famous song. The term Song of Song means the best of the best or the holiest of all his songs. It cites cities from both the northern and the southern kingdom and it mentions them as if they belong to the same political realm which have therefore strongly suggests a date before the division of the kingdom. The recipients then were most likely the Jews who were living during the lifetime of Solomon. The message is straightforward. The subject is love. There is a basic unity to this book. Certain features recur throughout and there is a general development that reflects the maturing relationship between the two lovers in it. There is a progression for a longing for a distant lover in the opening stanza to what appears to be the homecoming of a married couple in the final sections. The primary message is that husbands and wives are to enjoy marital love. There are however three different interpretations of the Song of Solomon as to how this primary concept is presented. The allegorical interpretation says fictional people and events are here used as symbols to suggest deeper or hidden meanings. One treatment sees the Songs of Solomon as an allegory on the history of Israel from the time of Exodus to the coming of the Messiah. In the Jewish version of this view, the Beloved is the Lord and the Maiden is Israel. Christians who adopt this approach interpret the Beloved as Christ and the Maiden as the Church, which is fine, however the Song of Solomon should not just be read as an allegory, it also is historical and typographical. The typographical method differs from the allegorical method of interpretation in that it maintains the historicity of the story. In an allegory, the events may or may not be historical. In a typographical narrative, the events are always real historical events. Many who have followed this interpretation of the Song of Solomon have insisted that the historical foundation of the book was Solomon's marriage to Pharaoh's daughter or perhaps some other princess and that that marriage typically represents the union of Christ with the Gentiles, in other words, the Church. Finally, there is a literal view which interprets the Song of Solomon as literally depicting the love of a man for a woman and stops short of offering a deeper meaning. As has been said, when the plain sense of Scripture makes common sense, one should seek no further. However, one should always bear in mind that these various views are not mutually exclusive and it is entirely possible for all three interpretations to apply all together at the same time. Thinking about the structure of this book, the form of the song is somewhere between a loose connection of songs and a narrative drama. Sometimes this book has been called a lyrical or a dramatic poem, but one built on a dialogue. The point being that there is a unified lyrical song with a dramatic form underlying it and the structure of this is presented as a lyrical poem that falls into six stanzas. The primary purpose of the Song of Solomon is to exalt the joys of love in courtship and in marriage. 
It offers a proper perspective of human love and avoids the extremes of lust on one hand and self-denial on the other. It is a forthright and positive endorsement by God of the idea of marital love in all its physical and emotional beauty. God has laid down for human society the fact that sexual love between a man and a woman has its rightful place. One reason for the inclusion of the Song of Songs in scriptures may have been to simply show God's approval of sexual love. However, the love that is described is always in the context of a relationship where a man and a woman commit themselves to each other in marriage to the exclusion of all others. Even those who hold hard to the literal interpretation accept that this book has this spiritual illustration and application, and most accept it certainly illustrates God's love for his covenant people Israel, and it at least anticipates Christ's love for his bride, the church. So in summary, a king called Solomon wrote a book about his love, courtship and marriage to a Shulamite woman in order to exalt the joys of marital love and to illustrate for us divine love and to remind those of us who are married are free to enjoy marital love we should also enjoy the fact that God has a divine love for us.